Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. And as I'm looking at this headline here, I can't help but be reminded of Nimrod and the Tower of Babel, um, where they were trying to build this tower that would reach into the heavens. And of course, God was angered by that and he confused their languages. And of course, they never completed um, the building of that tower. The only difference is we have already built our tower to heaven. It's called spaceships. So we've already made it into the heavens. But now we want to take it one step further and build in the heavenlies and create things and send life to live out on other um, heavenly bodies. Now, if God meant for us to live there, then certainly it would be compatible with our bodies. We wouldn't have to take these extra measures, and we, of course, would already be living there. He gave us the earth um, as a blessing to us to replenish and to take care of. He gave the moon as a um, light in the sky at night. He gave the moon for signs in the heavens to do with different prophetic events. He gave the moon that has a great impact, of course, on the bodies of water and the gravitational pull. Okay, so he did not give us the moon to live on, All right? So to me, the more and more we go on with advances in technology, the more like God we are striving to be. And personally, although it's very um, neat, there's just something that's not right about that. It says, a home of our own on the moon, European Space Agency reveals plans for the first human settlement outside the Earth and says inflatable base will be made by 3D printing robots. Now, some of the highlights here say 3D printing technology will transform raw lunar soil into livable domes, covering inflatable structures, will house four people and protect them from meteorites and gamma radiation could be ready for humans to move in within the next 40 years. Personally, I don't think we'll be here in 40 years. I'm sure that the global elitist, aka Illuminati, Luciferians, United Nations, Freemasons, I'm sure that they believe that they're going to be here 40 years from now and that because all these tragedies are happening upon the earth, they're going to need somewhere to escape to. My only question would be, how on earth do they think that they're going to burn their sacrifices on the moon? Hmm, interesting question. Now, the article says it could be the first human settlement on another planet. European Space Agency bosses today revealed a video tour of the moon base they hope could see its first visitor in 40 years. It will be made from an inflatable dome covered in lunar soil by robots to create a safe structure and will have room for four to live and work. Now, here's some of the pictures that they have posted here. This is the pressurized inflatable living and work area. Kind of interesting if you look at it. You know, I'm just pointing this out as a side note. It could be nothing, but it looks like an eye. 
doesn't that look like an eye to you? This would be the inner corner where the nose would be. This would be the outer, the lower lid, the upper lid. So that's just kind of what it looks like to me. Inside the moon base, the module has enough room for four people and includes an airlock. So a suit mounted on the outside um, could make going getting onto the lunar surface easy. The thick walls protect astronauts from radiation and meteorites. Here's another picture here. And they do state that 90% of the materials needed to build the structure are already existing on the moon. Um, so only the robots and lightweight parts, such as inflatables and the solid connector and entry segments would have to be ferried in from the earth. They also talk about more details in the creations of it. Um, you can see here, there is a video. Okay. I will provide the video in my article on before it's news. And also please make sure and visit my prophecy news website, which is www.vineoflifenews.com. Um, we are always posting up-to-date prophecy information. Now we do have ads on our website. If you ever see an inappropriate ad, please read my ad disclaimer at the top, click on it, send us the link, let us know, and we will have it removed at once. Once in a while, when you have ads on your website, um, you do have that situation, which occurs. So, um, I wish I didn't have to have ads, but we do have to have them. It enables us to pay for our web hosting and our maintenance. Once in a while, our servers get attacked, which can be pretty expensive. So back to the article. Um, again, as you're looking through at these pictures they have, and I've shared some of the information with you, I'm curious if the Tower of Babel comes to your mind as well. Okay, so you can just see the mini pictures here. Now, this is actually a simulated moon brick. It says moon brick simulated lunar soil has been used to create a 1.5 ton mock up, and 3D printing tests have been undertaken at a smaller scale in a vacuum chamber to echo lunar conditions. Okay, now right here are the 3D printing robots in action. The raw lunar material is turned into a pulp and sprayed to form a solid block that is then used to build walls at a rate of around two meters an hour. Planet Earth is protected by the atmosphere, the layer of air and gas that surrounds it. The atmosphere shields the Earth from solar radiation, keeps the temperature balanced, and protects us from meteoroids. On the Moon's south pole, you can see almost perpetual sunlight on the horizon this is the site of our lunar base. Conditions on the Moon are very different from those on Earth. Because the Moon has no atmosphere, there is no protection from solar radiation. There are extreme temperature fluctuations. And there is no protection from gamma radiation and no protection from meteoroids. The lunar lander has detached from the rocket launch and is on a course to Shackleton's crater, the moon's south pole. Inside the lander is a cylinder which contains an inflatable dome and two robot 3D printers. After the cylinder containing the habitation capsule has been unloaded, a dome is inflated from one end. 
This provides the support structure for construction, a little like scaffolding is used to build on Earth. The lunar habitation is built by a robot-operated 3D printer. At one end, it has a scoop to collect the regolith. In the centre are the containers for the printing material. At the other end, there is a robotic arm with a printing head. The robot collects regolith from the moon's surface. Layers of this moon dust are built up over the dome to create the protective shell. This process takes about three Earth months. The shell is made up of a hollow, closed cellular structure. Under a microscope, it would look very similar to the close-up of a bird's bone. Like a bone, it is light and incredibly strong at the same time. When the lunar base is complete, it can house four people. Inside the dome, they are protected from meteorites, gamma radiation and high temperature fluctuations. The original capsule functions as an airlock and technical support module. The skylights draw daylight into the living and workspaces, which are sheltered within a pressurised enclosure. This method is a pioneering advance in space-age construction. At Foster & Partners, we're used to designing for some of the world's most extreme climates. We often use materials found locally to create sustainable buildings on Earth. While the moon is an exciting new territory for architecture, the value of this logic endures. Okay, so here we are in space.com, the same exact article, how 3D printers could build futuristic moon colony. Now you can go to Google and type in this headline and this same story is on tons of not just blogs, but actual news websites, technology news, science news. It's all over the place. So this is real. And this is what they're wanting to do. Um, if you know Bible prophecy, this is not only interesting, but it's a um, joy in a sense that it tells us as, as technology increases, it tells us um, that we are very close to the end of this age. It's just one of those signs. Okay. Um, but if you're a Christian, this is also not good news because you know it goes against what God would want. All right. So please share this. And again, visit us at www.vineoflifenews.com. Um, for all your latest breaking prophecy news, please subscribe to us and uh, be sure and check us out and spread the good news. Thank you so much and God bless you.